Well, welcome to Basin Street Blues. Some help with lesson today, folks, and uh, I think it's a great tune to work on. One of my all-time favourite blues. And it's not a 12-bar blues format of a tune. It's uh, Actually, there's 12 bars in the verse, then it goes to 16 in the chorus. But uh, the 12 bars blues was a sort of a format of the blues, but uh, it doesn't mean to say all blues have got to have 12 bars, and that's only a format of the blues. Uh, a lot of blues tunes are completely varied and different in their chord structure. Well, I thought I'd uh, go and look up the definition of the blues musically, what it means yesterday, because I've never actually known, I've had an idea, but actually it came up with this description. The blues suggests feelings of melancholy, sadness and depression. Well, no wonder the blues is popular. <laughs> Because I think we all uh, we all suffer from some of those modes at times in our life. So let's go and have a listen to Bass and Street Blues. Why don't you come along with me? Bass and Street Blues. Folks, if you're going to have a crack at this one, uh, if you go to Banjo Hangout Forums, where I'm going to post this tune, uh, I'm going to post a PDF of the music, which is the melody line and the chords, and uh, it's in the key of B flat, and I don't do too many tunes actually as lessons in flat keys, but B flat's a great key, E flat, and uh, if you're a four string player, you're going to have to to learn flat keys if you're going to play with horns and brass instruments because uh, they love them. And believe me, they're, they're not hard. Once you get used to B flat, E flat, A flat, uh, they sound lovely on a banjo in my opinion and, uh, you know, don't hold back just because of the keys. Um, with five string players, uh, there's some great blues too that you five string players have played. A couple that come to mind are Farewell Blues and uh, Atlanta Blues or uh, make me a pallet on the floor and uh, also great blues of course and uh, it's just endless the amount of great tunes there are to work on. Getting back to Basin Street usually uh, 
the horn player or the singer takes the first line. And then the ensemble answers. But what I did with this lesson, I did both the, uh, the actual vocal line and the answer. So I did the actual melody up higher and the answers down lower, just to get through the lesson. And uh, it's got some great chords in it, Basin Street Blues. Those first set of chords in the actual start of the tune. That format's used a lot in jazz, in popular music, you know. Um, and the course of the tune uh, is a perfect example of the cycle of fifths, starting from B flat, D7, G7, C7, going through the cycle and eventually getting back to B flat. So uh, it's a great tune to work on. And the course of Basin Street Blues, that chord format resembles a lot of other tunes where you've got that change from a B flat to a D7 initially in the tune. Uh, one that comes to mind is uh, five foot two. There's endless possibilities. So uh, I don't think I'll run the tune through again slowly for you. I've done it pretty slow. Actually, the tune's not faster than that when you actually hear it. Uh, done by Lewis Armstrong or whoever recorded it. But uh, if you want to have take a listen to Lewis do it, he's, uh, he does a wonderful job of Basin Street Blues. And my favourite take is uh, live in Stuttgart, Germany. Stuttgart, Germany. Actually, a wonderful uh, rendition of Basin Street. And uh, Louis tour toured the world and the USA all his life, never stopped. And he was a great ambassador, one of the greatest musicians that had lived, ever lived, in my opinion. But uh, And he played Basin Street heaps of times in his show. He just loved it because, <laughs> after all, he came from New Orleans and he, he was there when it all started uh, in New Orleans. So, uh, anyway, best of luck with uh, Basin Street. One of the um, discussions that comes up on the four string forum all the time is when we play a banjo do we actually stick a finger down here and and hold a position when we're playing our banjos well that's half right and half wrong um, the way some people describe it is actually purchasing these fingers here on the head and playing their banjo that is right but it's not fixed. This position here is not fixed. It's so light. And it's just more or less a fulcrum point for the rest of your hand to work off. And it can slide across the head. It won't restrict your right hand at all. If you just be very, you know, very light with that. And sometimes it even comes off when I'm playing it. But it always comes back to a foundation to start that to position you, your pick. And the other thing I do a lot is play with my fingers only. I'll just give you a description before I close the lesson. If I did Basin Street Blues, just the first line. Okay, I'm gonna play it with a pick. Not much difference is there. Because I'm holding that pick that soft, playing that soft, and if you can achieve that, it'll uh, help your hand relax, your whole body will relax, because it'll get free attention and free up. So try and play with your pick very soft, of course you can always hit it harder, but you can't always hit it softer unless you know how. This is possibly my last lesson before Christmas, so uh, all my hangout friends and uh, banjo players all over the world have a Merry Christmas and bye for now.